Hello and welcome to this session on connectivity and compatibility. This is a recording of a session that took place in December 20, on December 2020 um, with um, live attendees. Um, this session um, is just a recording of um, the presentation without an audience, so therefore it will not be as long as the session was um, during the uh, live session. Um, so first of all, let me just introduce myself. So my name is Eduardo Saldana and I am the e-learning lead tutor at Leicester Skills and Learning Service. Um, I include my email in this presentation just in case um, I say something that you would be interested to know more about or you have any questions related to the content of this session, then please feel free to email me um, with any questions and I will get back to you. Um, so this uh, this presentation is also part of the Digital ACE project. ACE stands for Adult Community Education. Um, and this is a project that is designed to support um, adult community education providers um, in the, the, the next stage of the techno technological journey and to help developing the digital capacity to improve and enhance uh, the, the, adult, the approach to adult learning online. Uh, this was developed during the, the pandemic, um, but also it, it helps um, support um, adult education, adult community education providers. And the main thing about these, and um, before I start, I want to, uh, to make it clear that this video will not give you answers because um unfortunately um i'm not i not i don't have the answers to, to all questions and problems about connectivity and compatibility but it will help you and hopefully guide you with um kind of some hints and some answers to, to, to hints to to start answering the questions that you have about connectivity and compatibility or maybe just uh, for you to see that what you're doing is not far from what we are doing at Leicester but again don't expect to find the answers to your questions to all your questions in here there will just be some general guidance and support because the, at the end of the day the, the uh, main a purpose of this project is a support network before, between different centers and community education providers and not just one um, answer to all questions. So let me move uh, my video away from the text. There we go. Um, so the purpose of this session is to define the terms connectivity and compatibility and to look at the current, current technological landscape it's also to discuss what does connectivity and compatibility mean for you as a service. Um, it's also to discuss what does connectivity and compatibility mean for your learners. Okay, so different perspective, perspectives to the same problem and how to assist your staff and learners with connectivity and compatibility related issues. So let's start. So. The first thing that I want you to think about is, um, is imagine, please do not think about the pandemic and traveling on a, on a bus during the pandemic, because obviously that is um, advised against. You think about uh, traveling to work before or after the pandemic and think which one would you choose to travel to work? Would you choose a horse-drawn carriage or would you take a bus okay i guess it, it depends okay but if you want to get from point a to point b the fastest way possible i would um assume or that or imagine that you will be taking the bus instead of the horse um but if you think about these now let's add another um, variant to the problem if you think about traveling to work and your choices are road or a motorway and just a path um, on a little countryside. Um, it looks like a bit of a forest. Um, which one would you choose? Would you choose, I, I imagine you would choose the bus to go um, to drive in the, in the motorway or to just travel on a, on a motorway or a road? And a horse to encourage to carry carriage, sorry, to go um, through through that path. Um, 
But at the end of the day, if you think about it, both myths and modes of transport will be able to, to go through both places. Now, six, which one is safer? I would I would assume the bus is safer on the motorway than a horse-drawn carriage, and sometimes it's not legal. I would say many times it's not legal to to have that method of transport on the motorway, and maybe the bus can can struggle and and make part of the way through the the path from uh, and the forest, um, but you will probably destroy. The bus, and this is the what well, connectivity and compatibility. This is a conundrum that this 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 throws at us: is connectivity and compatibility, both um, both uh, transports and both uh, roads. If you want to pass, they are ways of connecting point A and point B. But if you start mixing and the means of transport with, with the pathways and different roads, not all of them will be able to travel through that, through that. or maybe they will be able to, as, as I said, with the bus and, and the forest, but it might not make it to the end of, of, the, of the road. So if you think in terms of um, technology devices, maybe your learners are using a, a and just carrying on with the analogy, a Ferrari, um, but you're giving them a path on a forest to travel through, and it might be compatible, but it's not going to allow the Ferrari to go at the, the, its full field, it's a full speed. Um, and the same with um, you might be giving learners um, the best motorway and uh, that you you can afford, but then they have a host on current carriage and um, they cannot get the most out of that and they will get frustrated because they will see probably the rest of um, the peers just just driving past them at crazy speeds so this is um, the main problem and this is what i want to talk about today but before i just start talking about um, connectivity and compatibility, I want also to define what I mean by them. And at the end of the day, um, both are terms that simply refer to the capacity of platform systems and applications to work together without having to be altered to do so. This is with the analogy of the of the horse and the bus um, is the same. So the horse will be able to go through the road. It doesn't need to be altered, but it might not do it at its faster speed or as fast as the motorway allows vehicles to, to um, drive. And the same with the bus. The bus might be able to make it through the road, but you might need to alter it so they can do it. And therefore that will not be compatible. There needs an alteration to be, uh, to be able to do that. So although this definition is simple and straightforward, Life is made more complex when looking at all the different devices and systems available. And that is compounded by a lack of knowledge. So if you start thinking or you think about the answer of this question, for example, what operating systems are available to learners at the moment? If you think about our learners and what devices they have at home, some of them may have the latest um, the Pixel 5 uh, or, an, or an, um, the latest iPhone, which there's so many that, who knows, um, they might have um, a, a Windows, 10, Windows 10 computer update, um, updated to the latest version and the latest patch. They might have a very old computer with Windows XP, Windows 95. They might have an Ubuntu with a, um, the, or any other Linux distribution. There's so many different operating systems available in the market that is very difficult to turn around and give an answer is most people are using we don't know and the other thing to think about is how many different versions of each operating system are learners learners using because as i said before 
Windows, there's more than one Windows version. Even Windows 10 has different versions uh, of the same operating system because some of them might be up to date, some of them may, may be the, the previous patch, and therefore there's some difference in how it works, some difference in how it looks if it's not kept updated. Some Somebody might be using Windows, but it might be Windows XP, Windows 7, Windows um, Vista and all of them look different and all of them have uh, react differently and look different and, and uh, have different compatibility issues with different platforms. If a, a Windows system is outdated, it might not be able to run the latest um, Chrome browser uh, or Firefox or Brave uh, because it's not secure anymore. The same with Android phones. If anyone is using a, a phone that is under, under Android 5 Lollipop, they might they will not be able to download most of the apps that are available and modern at, uh, at, at this time. The iOS has the same problem. So this is what I mean with connectivity and compatibility and the issues that we can have. So what does this mean for you as a service? As a service, I think the best thing that you can do to start assessing this is to take a step back and look at the needs of your tutors and learners. Talk to those that are on the, that are on the front line, not only your reception staff, I mean, everyone that is just taking and having the, the most um, contact time with the, your members of the, of the public, your learners, everyone. So, by curriculum, I mean tutors, I mean support workers, I mean uh, teaching assistants, anyone that is on that front line, and the same with admin staff, anyone that is answering the phone will have a better understanding of what your um, learners are asking. Do they have any concerns? Are they hearing concerns from learners? Are there frequently asked questions? And if so, are you providing them with the right information? Do they know how to answer those, those questions? Have they been um, instructed? Have they been trained on how to how these um, different uh, questions can be asked? How, how the questions that the members of the public are asking? Are, they, are you preempting pre as a service with what you're doing in the background? What questions might be the most frequently asked questions? If you suddenly come up with a new VLE, are you giving learners all the tools to be able to, uh, to understand it? Are you giving your staff the, the tools to be able to understand how it works? So, I also recommend to look at the learner journey. Are you making assumptions about your learner's IT literacy? And not only your um, most of your of your learners, but also think that during the pandemic, one of the biggest issues was um, people um, having assumptions about ease of learners thinking that because they're entry one, they don't understand technology. And sometimes that was the case, but in many cases, ESO learners have, have um, and low skill learners in general have surprised us as services um, many times because they were able to cope with the technology that we thought they were not going to be able to cope with. So don't, start don't don't start uh, making assumptions contact learners in in advance contact and and help um contact your tutors and and try and, and find a way where you can see the actual knowledge of these um learners but also provide learners with the information that they need to succeed don't expect them to find the information just out of the uh, the practice because if, if they don't know how it works they will refuse to engage with it they will need some induction they will need some help so in my, I, I would say there are three main points to consider the first one is the distance digital or digital learning policy um, both names um, I've, I've, I've seen um, is there a clear consistent service-wide approach is there just a one approach as a service or other different approaches, different curriculum areas react differently, use different VLEs, use different video conferencing platforms. And what's that, what does that mean for you? Are staff and learners supported? 
the kind of attitude and patience goes a long way, especially with people that both staff and learners that do not understand it, that need to be of hand holding. If you have a bit of can do attitude and patience, then they will just be able to control it as well as everyone else. They might need a bit more of hand holding, but they will get there. And then manage learners' expectations and listen to their needs. It's, it's important to manage learners' expectations because there's a big misunderstanding of what technology means and what technology offers. And sometimes because what the perception of technology is, it can do everything as it does on the telly. Um, learners expect magic. They expect um, you to be able to access the computer remotely and see what they can see. And they will get frustrated if you don't explain that that's not how it works, that they, you cannot see what is on the screen and they need to describe it. So manage their expectations and also it's a bit of educating the community to, to understand um, technology, what it can do and what it cannot do. So I'm going to go on now into a bit more detail about these points. So the digital learner policy is, um, is quite important because it helps you to set out a common approach of the service. If you're having a joined up approach and you provide clarity on your VLE, what really you use, and I'll recommend just one, what systems and platforms you use, this is an enabler for staff because they will know also what well, they can use instead of um, having uh, nowadays the, the problem is we have hundreds, thousands of applications, VLEs, everything. There's too many things available for us. And if you as a service as well, limit a bit, not completely, but just tell them this is our VLE, this is what we use because we've proven and we, we think that this is the best. Don't use 25 different ones, just use our VLE, just use this limited number of platforms because too many platforms will make your um, life complicated as a service, but also each single, every single tutor's life difficult, difficult because they will have too many options. They will spend too long learning about different apps and eventually they will get frustrated because they've spent so much time trying to do something that eventually didn't get anywhere that it's better if you just filter it and just um, support them in this and provide them with, with CPD. But this helps um, when providing training as well because you have a limited amount of um, service approved apps, platforms and VLEs, and you can just have that unified approach. Everyone in your service will participate in CPD about uh, Microsoft for 365 for education, and they will all understand or have that support to, to understand what it, it offers. They will all have um, support on what Zoom can do and cannot do. If you use different apps, then it's very difficult for you to offer training in-depth training for all of those different apps. Okay, But that's why I recommend use one VLE and one video conferencing platform only as a service. At the same time, it's important to give your staff enough options and flexibility to allow them to teach comfortably and reuse existing resources. There is no need to create anxiety or reinvent the wheel. But this, I mean, our digital learning policy sets out that there are three different approaches to online teaching. There's the synchronous, there's the asynchronous, it's the blended um, approach. Synchronous means tutors deliver the call while they're on the call, they do the same as they will do in the classroom. They set out the tasks, they, they work together during that time and then at the end of that lesson they set the homework and that's it there's the asynchronous style where there is no video conferencing there's no call the tutor set the work and learners compute completed when they can okay which is quite useful um when you have learners that are um at the moment dealing with um caring for someone, have the children at home, there's someone working from home that can, and, and is taking the internet connection so they cannot participate in calls. So there's, there's some positives in there. And then we have the blended learning, where there's the uh, video conference uh, for 
that sometimes is shorter than a normal uh, lesson will be face to face. And then there is that asynchronous learning at the same time. So there's work to be done during the week. There's also homework. So there's a lot of different um, aspects in there that, that combine synchronous and asynchronous. And also asynchronous learner can also be when um, a blended class then it's recorded and then the learners continue or synchronous class is recorded and then some learners can be in the same class uh, participating in, in the synchronous class. Some others can be doing it synchronously and some others can be doing it, doing it as, a, as a blended lesson depending on, on what um, helps. But I think it's, um, it, it gives us so much more flexibility um, if, we, if we set out those clear uh, approaches and then every tutor then chooses what works best for them. Now are staff and learner supported? I think um, since we, um, we've we gone fully online um, there's been a clear focus, focus on the E for e-learning. People have been just um, obsessed with the technology, obsessed with technology problems, and they have not been focused on what is important, which is the learning bit. And it's, it's something that's been quite difficult and it still is quite difficult for some learners to get their head around. They don't see technology as an enabler for their learning. They see technology as a problem. The te technology is a frustration and they just wish to go back to face-to-face -to -face teaching and using paper. Um, th but it's, it's something that we need to support everyone, staff and learners, to ensure that they, they stop having that obstacle, that we can just help them minimize the impact of technology and understand that we are doing exactly the same. We are teaching, we are helping the community learn, we are trying to be um, a, a community establishment with this, um, this socializing, but instead of doing it face to face, because at the moment it's not allowed, it's being done online. And there's obviously some personalization and adapting that it is doing, but it can be done. So the main issue that I have seen since March personally is that both staff and learners do not understand the devices and platforms that they are using. If staff or learners feel unsupported or messed around, confidence in your service is unfortunately impacted. And it's, imp it's important to offer CPD, but not only one session of CPD on how to use your VLE and your video conferencing platform, but continuous support um, from the beginning, just constant reminders of this is how it works. If you need further training, um, I don't mind repeating the same over and over and over and over again, if that's going to help you um, be successful. Okay, so make sure that you support um, is given, but also by someone that, um, your staff can rely on and, it, and it's available to them because it's a very difficult time, especially now in the, in the middle of a pandemic, um, where tutors feel on their own and they feel stressed because they don't know how it works and they try to reach for someone and no one is there because from the perspective, they feel like they've been asked to do something, but they have not been given the support on how to do it. And if you don't know, then how are you going to learn it? Is that going to take a lot more of your time? Is there anyone that's going to be able to guide it? Because that, this is not a refusal to learn what you need to learn, but it's the requirement of guidance in order to get where we want them to be. And also learners can benefit from dropping drop surgeries, okay, when that's allowed. Because again, the most, the most frequent complaint is that they're expected to know how to operate a platform that is completely new to them and let alone complete work and submit it where they don't know how to use it. They don't know how to operate their own devices. How are they going to be able to engage with the resources that you need them to complete? They need training, they need induction. 
Okay, so an example I will tell you in our case, this induction is being done um, through documents. Once they're invited to Google Classroom, the first thing that they find is the service induction with assignments. They engage with um, three different documents that explains them. In our case, we're using Google uh, G Suite for Education or Google Workspace. Um, they um, read the first document, take an, an assignment as a Google form, then they read the second induction document, take an assignment, and the third one, and we monitor as a service, service wide, we monitor the results and we see who is struggling with, um, with what and we can target those individuals or we can target whole groups and give that support that they need in order to understand it. Another thing is manage learners' expectations. Because as I said before, if they're not managed, they expect magic. And that's why we need to be very clear as a service I think in two levels. First, as a service, service-wide, this is what we can do. This is what you can expect from us. Okay, And then on a tutor by tutor basis as well, you also have your behavior, your, your expectations, your non-negotiables as, as a teacher in a classroom. But as a service, you just need to support those um, tutor, by, the tutor expectations by saying we, we cannot do everything. We would love to, but we cannot. Okay, because otherwise they will not know what to expect. There are major misunderstandings of what technology offers and means. Learners will be very quick to blame your service for uses that uh, issues, sorry, that originate on their own devices or from their internet connections. There's been a lot of contacts, for example, in our case learners contacting us to say that the internet, um, sorry, that the calls were dropping, that the videos were um, freezing, that the audio was not great. And then we found out that their internet connection that was below um, five megabits per second. So they were not, their internet connections were not strong enough. But instead of understanding that because they don't know that, um, they were blaming us. And then we just had to educate them and let them know that this is unfortunately nothing that we can do, that they need to contact their internet service provider in order to support um, them or improve their internet connection. Another thing is we need to provide them, as I was saying, uh, with minimum, minimum requirements for online courses, including connectivity, so we need to be make, making clear that they know what operating systems are supported. We, in our case, we use, um, as I said, Google Classroom. Google Classroom can be accessed online with an Amazon tablet, but the Silk browser on Amazon tablet doesn't allow our learners to access Google Meet. They cannot download it. And the only uh, way they have to bypass that issue is by um, unlocking the tablet, which obviously we don't recommend, and it requires a lot of technical knowledge that most of our learners do not have. But we are very clear in letting them know that this is not a supported device. Okay, we also give them access to guides and support. Okay, because this is very important for them to know what step by steps. Um, they, what are the steps to follow in order to edit a Google um, document using an Android phone, for example, that this if there has been set as an assignment, how to access um, Microsoft Teams from a mobile device if they don't have a login. So there's a lot of things that you can help them um, set up in these guides, okay? And also, especially, I know it's something that I keep repeating in different ways, but you should also set boundaries for what you can do as a service to help. Okay, um, the same way that um, before the pandemic, learners did not contact you to complain because the, the car broke down and um, they didn't demand you step-by-step -step instructions on how to fix their car. Unfortunately, they cannot do the same with the personal devices. As a service, 
we can we can guide them, we can train post them on where to go or who to find support, but we don't have the capacity or the ability to support every single learner in the community with personal devices and personal um, internet connection problems. There are internet service providers that they can do that, or in the case of um, learners from um, disadvantaged backgrounds, then we have the option to provide some of them with a device and an internet connection. But it's just those boundaries, making clear that they know what they can get from you and what they cannot and why. So, as I said before, at Leicester Adult Skills and, and Learning, we use Google Apps and Google Classroom, and we have been facing the following issues with connectivity and compatibility. From members of staff, we had the, the fact that the issue that not all members of staff have a work laptop. We have some sessional tutors that work for us just a couple of hours a week. And we, um, as a service, cannot afford to uh, provide everyone with a laptop. And those who have been um, provided with a work laptop are heavily restricted on what they can access and, co and also connect through a very slow VPN. It's, um, cancelled wide VPN and since everyone started working from home sometimes it's an absolute nightmare to get um, a call to work at a, at a reasonable speed. Members of staff that are using their own machines did not necessarily understand the devices or are using all the systems. As I mentioned before, cases of really outdated Mac devices or, or iOS systems or Windows um, systems or even Linux distributions that are not um, current anymore and they're not supported and all the issues that this created for those members of staff. Members of staff had also the tendency, and I think what most of us were used in the past to use Microsoft Office to create documents for learners instead of other platforms. But as um, I said before, with uh, Google Workspace or G Suite, um, Enterprise, uh, G Suite for Education, um, Microsoft, we need to use Google Docs, not Microsoft Office, because they can uh, learners can edit the documents uh, that are um, Microsoft Office, um, but it adds new obstacles for learners. It's not making the uh, it's not making the edit and access and editing the document as straightforward as it would do with um, Google Docs. And the problem that um, we saw with this is not all learners have a Microsoft Office license, as uh, and and the problem with this is also they cannot we're not going to ask them to get a, a license, which is over a hundred pounds just to use to access our course. And we cannot provide them. I wish we could, but we cannot provide every single one of them with a Microsoft Office license for their devices. Well, the only thing that we can do is provide them with Google Docs, chat free and are included with a student account. Members of staff as well, this is uh, one of the biggest problems at the end of uh, the uh, summer term, um, the first lockdown, was uh, they were expecting learners to print the worksheets that they send as a PDF and then scan them once completed and send them back. The biggest issue with this is, as you can imagine, not every single learner has um, a printer or a scanner at home. And in some cases, learners were handwriting it and then sending pictures, low quality pictures or very blurry pictures, which made uh, tutors' lives very difficult. And also the exchange were happening via email instead of using the VLE. That, as you can imagine, that took a lot of time from uh, teachers, tutors. And some learners use mobile devices to access online sessions. Uh, we, we discovered there's quite a large amount of numbers, but tutors were not planning sessions that were accessible by these learners. In some cases, um, some tutors have been, have taken on themselves um, to, when they've seen that all the learners were using a mobile device to start teaching 
from a from a phone themselves from a mobile device because that way they experience the platform as the learners were experiencing because um, sometimes the problem is if you prepare a session for a computer or you're on a video conferencing call using a computer and a learner is accessing it from a phone all of the things that you're sharing with them will be too small for them to be able to read it and then they will complain if the person delivering the session does not really understand that this is the problem then they will not be really successful on getting the message through getting the learning through everything will become just a technology problem so by taking those steps like in the in this case of the of these tutors where they they started delivering sessions on the phone they kind of uh, deleted or got rid of all of these connectivity and compatibility issues because they were using a phone, they were experiencing everything as a learner were, and then they were able to assist learners. This is how I can see it. Can you find how to unmute your phone, for example? Can you find all of that from the same device? So that's a really good example of a way to avoid having these issues. And now from learners, we had especially in March, um, the fixed mindset of, I am a technophobe. Um, I don't want to take a course online. I don't want to move online with my course, especially as, as uh, I, I guess it's the same um, for you. You have the same experience. Everyone thought in, in March that lockdown was only going to be for a couple of weeks. And um, after that, we will be able to just resume a normal um, face-to-face -face sessions when that didn't happen then obviously some of them had a massive impact on enrollments but then september a lot of um, those learners that um, identified themselves as technophobes had to come back um, if they wanted to do something instead of just sitting at home in lockdown just also bear in mind that um i'm i'm, I'm talking to you from from Leicester and that means that we've um we've been in in lockdown since March 2020 we're now heading towards um March 2021 and we have still been um in under different restrictions lockdown restrictions our face to face teaching resumed for 2 3 months in total in this year the rest has been completely online since then so if learners wanted to engage with us, they had to just get rid of that fixed mindset and change it for a growth mindset. We have a lot of um, success stories from learners that feel that they, because of our move online, because of our support, they were able now to use um, that technology to communicate with the family and feel um, not completely isolated even when they cannot leave their homes. There's also an issue for learner was the lack of understanding of the requirements that uh, they needed to join the course. So that included enrolling onto an online course without any access to an internet connected device. Okay, there's, there's examples of, of learners expecting that suddenly the internet will reach their device or that they will, could borrow a tablet from a nephew or a grandson, grandchild um, that had internet connection in the house of the family member, but not in their own, at their own homes. So that obviously was a clear misconception and a clear lack of understanding. So that helped us profile and help with our questioning when you when we're enrolling learners. There's also um, learners that were enrolling into an online course with a very slow internet connection and then complained about the quality of the course. As I mentioned before, um, screens keep freezing, the sound is not good, but that's because of their internet connection. There's also that not understanding that a course is not just about the face-to-face -face exchange and meetings, but also that we needed evidence of work for our funding as well. So we had the issue with um, where our um, video links were sent by a Google Calendar instead of uh, by a set on Google Classroom. So learners were bypassing the Google Classroom, the VLE, and they were not 
working, but they were not engaging with work. And what the tutor said, you, have you seen this on Google Classroom? They said yes, but they clearly meant no. Um, and therefore, we, have, we had to address that issue by making sure that instead of emailing the video conferencing link, it was on Google Classroom and that they, all learners were trained to go to Google Classroom and click on the link in order to access the video conferencing um, platform. Plus, um, they have to engage with the induction documents. Learners uh, were under the impression, really wrong impression in this case, that they will receive a free gadget, like a state-of-the-art MacBook or Windows computer or tablet, and a free internet connection from the service. As I mentioned before, we do have some devices that are available for those that are in a very disadvantaged um, position or situation at this time, but we are not going and we cannot afford, even if we wanted to, we cannot afford to provide every single one of our learners, which comes over the thousands with a new device and a new internet connection. So there you go. So what does this mean for your learners? So we as a service are striving to give learners the best experience possible. We're working hard, we're making mistakes, and we're learning from our mistakes, which is what is helping us to carrying, carry on and, and attract more members of the community because they see that we are improving, that we are listening to them, and we are helping as much as we can with limits, but we are making sure that they are still learning, even with um, the implication that it needs to be through a device, not just it kind of be face to face. But sometimes we get distracted by shiny platforms that promise to deliver the most best bells and whistles on the market. Most demonstrations that, that have taken place, as you, as, uh, I don't know if you have been in that situation, but around March, there were a lot of providers contacting us with a lot of different tools and then they demonstrated the tool on a computer. They showed us um, what the platform can do and how they look on devices with big screens and keyboards. But then our re uh, learner's reality is very different. As I said before, most of them are using tiny little phone screens. And sometimes it's making it very difficult for them if the session is planned via Zoom, but then you're asking learners to leave the Zoom call without closing it in order to access another platform that you are asking them to engage with while they're in the call. And sometimes learners do not have that uh, knowledge. So we need to make sure that we take that into consideration when we are we're planning because they might have the connectivity, they might have the compatibility, but they might not have the skills in order to be able to access what you're asking them to. Okay. So for our learners, the best platform that you can use is a virtual learning environment that they can access from any device. Okay, as I said, in our case, we use G Suite Enterprise for Education, G Suite for Education in some cases. And that means that learners have Google Classroom installed on the, on the devices or on just on the computers and the browser. They can access all the assignments. Everything that they do is stored and saved online. They don't have to do anything else that, that's com that complete the task. And then that's automatically shared with the teacher. So they, they don't have to do anything else. Um, they again can connect to Google Meet through Google Classroom. They have the link on top if they're accessing from a phone, have the little camera um, on the device that they tap on and then opens up in Google Meet straight away. So that's, it's trying to keep everything centralized in one place instead of having too many different apps all over the place. Okay. They also need the ability to the classwork on any device, as I say, and have a secure integrated video conferencing platform. By secure, I mean um, some video conferencing platforms had very bad press at, um, at, at some point, and I think 
if you're using any of those video conferencing platforms, you need to make sure that you reassure your learners that this is not going to happen and that you have safeguards in place. Because sometimes people react by what they hear, not by what they know. Okay, so make sure that you let them know what you're doing in order to uh, reassure and make sure that everything is secure. Okay, so be at least that allow you to do anything from one place or everything from one place is so I say Google Classroom. Again, I'm not trying not to be biased, but this this is a platform that we use and therefore is a platform that I've um, more experience with. But you also have um, Canvas, Blackboard, Moodle, Microsoft Teams or Microsoft 365 for education is called now. So all of them allow you to do everything from one place. Okay, it you know, so allows you to use mobile devices and or a computer. So that gives you that variety of accessing things from different places. Okay. And then, uh, unfortunately, there is no one, see, one size fits all answer to fixing connectivity and compatibility issues, I'm afraid. Sorry. Um, you need to go back and look at learners needs and learners pain points what is making them suffer the most what is annoying them in my case i can tell you in our case is um, when learners are using a private gmail account and the student account and when they click on from the waffle or the nine dots or the mosaic so many names officially google calls it a waffle and they click there click on google classroom it says the classroom doesn't exist because uh, the browser is aut automatically reversing back into the default account so so, so that's one of the biggest pain points because it means that when they're in the classroom when they manage to just re go back and find the right account and they go to click on the document to work and then they're not given editing rights because again the new tab is reverting back into the default account in our case we we've, we're teaching learners on how to set a different profile a student account the student profile on google chrome and then they have the personal profile that they don't clash you can provide them with tools and support, but also set boundaries. I know this is one of the things I keep repeating. But I think it's very important. You need your learners and tutors to be empowered and independent. Okay, don't create dependency. Don't create a culture where they're constantly ringing you with the same problem. It needs to be a, there needs to be an answer. There needs to be that um, growth mindset where you are allowing and helping the community to to expand their knowledge and not constantly try to get you to support them. Handholding can happen, okay? But there's, uh, but there needs to be a limited amount of handholding and then you need to release the learners. So create how, create how to guide for tutors and FAQ sections for learners that they can access. We have one on our lesterlearns.ac.uk website. There's a, there's a long FAQ where they can find different answers depending on what they're looking for to so the student account, how Google Classroom works, on mobile devices, on tablets, on computers. There's a lot of different information that they can refer to. And also tutors or um, admin staff on the phone, they can signpost these learners on how to find the answers to their queries. Author one to, to one support to tutors and uh, your staff as well, your frontline staff, admin staff, because they it's, it's good if they know how they can help learners with these issues instead of just start signposting them to other people. If your tutors and your frontline staff know how to answer most or some of the most frequently asked questions, that will be empowering for them as staff and also will help the learner with the, the, the compact to connectivity issues or compatibility issues. If everyone is on the same page, then that helps with your approach as a service as well. You can also consider changing your enrollment procedures. Just think about the learner journey instead of what you can do uh, with what resources that you have at the moment. Maybe you can use the same resources, but in a different way, in a, in a way that your learners are informed. Okay, so, and they can, uh, they're receiving the right information at the right, right, right time. But this, I mean, at the point of enrollment, are they being asked? 
are they being told this is what you need if you don't have an internet connection at home you cannot do an online course if you're trying to access from a phone that will be that means it's going to be challenging for you can you get another device is it possible what can we do to assist you or even if if you have this latest fiber optic state of the art internet connection is there going to be anyone else at home playing xbox online or playstation 5 online because even if you have that if you're such a good powerful internet connection you're not going to have a better great experience because there's someone else that's going to be taking taking all your data all the bro all the broadband while you're struggling to listen to your italian lesson over the phone or the video conferencing or um, meet zoom or meet uh, whatever you're using but also this gives you the opportunity to run courses to support learners with IT before the start of the course, like how to learn online with us. Okay, it can be an in a quick induction course. Um, and also comes under the essential, essential digital skills framework and can attract funding. Because even if um, after, after the pandemic, you decide to continue with the online, some, some level of online learning, um, if you have the right questions for the for your learners at the point of enrollment you can maybe filter them out there might be people that will be not as knowledgeable as they should be to take an online course but not far away from it so maybe these how to learn online with us will help with help will help them to join the online course or maybe they're not there yet but they want to and then you can offer them a, a free it course free because of funding um that will help them to join that course maybe next year or next term so that helps you also um, support your own own learning and also uh, support the community with their digital skills so main thing is done make your learners dependent let me just move my camera so that you can see that okay because our mistakes were um the admin staff were not adequate, adequately trained and could not deal with most queries due to lack of knowledge and restricted access. Okay. They were working blind and when learners were ringing um, our admin staff to ask for help, our main line to ask for help, they couldn't help because they couldn't see what the learners were talking about. They didn't understand how the, the platform worked. They didn't understand what the learners were seeing. And sometimes learners were not scrolling up or down enough for um, to see what to, to, to guide the person on the other side of the phone that was supposed to be helping them. So this is a problem that obviously we, we, we sorted, but it's something that is important to think about. If a learner is um, contacting you to help because they need help with connectivity, compatibility, or anything that is um, that they require to continue online, and the person on the phone is not able to help. That is going to create, as I said before, a lack of trust. There's the assumption that everyone uh, we had the assumption that everyone was using Windows computers. As I said, it's kind of, it's just kind of summarizing and bringing all of it together. Service failed to explain how our VLE worked to learners, to staff, and our website was outdated and had no FAQ with, with answers to questions. Plus, tutors were not told where to signpost the learners who need help. So they were all taking all of these problems with them. So what we're doing and what we've done to fix this. We've trained the admin staff on how to support learners on computers, smartphones, and tablets, and they have access to the admin so that they can see what the problem is. What and in, in the case of learner, the digital learning policy was is, is, is being created, was created and makes clear to learners and staff how online learning works with us. It's an extensive FAQ on our website, Leicester Learn Thought is the UK, uh, with answers to most of the questions uh, that we have been asked since March. Or as you can imagine, it's quite an extensive piece of work that has been divided in, in sub pages. E-learning mentors have been introduced to support staff with their IT questions as well, the connectivity, compatibility, any questions, we are able to help them and to bridge the divide between admin and curriculum to make sure that everyone understands and is on the same page. And tutors receive and are receiving guidance of what was expected of them when helping learners. What are the limits as well? We were talking about setting the boundaries as a service, also setting the boundaries of a tutor 
tutors cannot allow the lessons to become a technology lesson, that this is how you need to click and then one learner taking over because they're having problems with, I cannot see you, I cannot hear you. And they need to, there's a limit where they can stop and say, you need to contact our main line so that they will be able to help you because we cannot allow that. We cannot allow lessons to just become technology lessons, the E instead of the learning, okay? So just to come to an end, the purpose of this session was to define the terms of connectivity and compatibility and look at the current technological landscape, all of the different um, operative systems that we have and what that means what, uh, as a service. Um, what does connectivity and compatibility mean for you as a service? What does this mean for your learners and how to assist your staff and learners with connectivity and compatibility related issues? Okay, so if you have any questions regarding any of the apps or things that I've mentioned during this session, my apps I mean like different platforms, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. I think um, my email is is there. Um, if I think um, if um, I think I've, I've tried to cover everything as clearly as I could. But if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out. And I hope that these videos helpful for you. Thank you very much.